Hey guys, Matt Lake here with another Unreal 5 tutorial. In today's video, I've had a bit of a request on how to set up cloth in Unreal 5. Cloth in itself is a big feature, so I'm going to do a handful of videos covering a variety of topics from LODs, cloth properties, and differences between the chaos and physics solutions. Uh, but today's video, we're going to start very simple. We're going to get a cloth running on the mannequin from the Lyra demo. Uh, we're going to give him a little cape. So when he runs around, he's got a little Superman cape on. Uh, so for those not familiar, Lyra is a free demo um, on the marketplace. It's kind of a multiplayer shooter game. Um, but yeah, we're just going to put a cape on one of these characters. So let's get started. So inside of Maya, we've already got the mannequin character in here. I've got a little cube on his back, which is going to represent his cape. Uh, it's nothing particularly fancy, but it'll do for the demonstration of this video. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to need to start off by skinning this cape to the character itself. Uh, so one thing I think people overlook quite a bit when they're setting up cloth is that skinning is super important uh, because when you paint cloth, you don't paint what is and what is not cloth. What you're actually painting is the distance the cloth can travel from its skinned position. So let's just start by skinning it to the entire hierarchy. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy the skin weights from the mannequin over to the cube by going to skin, copy skin weights. And then because we don't want to deal with any of the, the other influences, let's just remove all unused ones by again going to skin, edit influences and remove unused influences. And if we go into the skin tool here, you'll notice uh, we've only got the ones which are relevant to the character. Uh, so if we go to like the clavicles, you'll notice we're going to get those kind of Kind of for free, we won't have to do any manual skin work up there. But as we go down the spine, we're, we're going to get a lot of the, the shearing effect and a lot of influences influencing the cape that we don't really want. Uh, so really what we want from this is basically probably about spine five downwards, maybe spine four. Yeah, spine four downwards, we basically want to replace all of those skin weights. So to do that, we can simply go to our paint tool again on the cape. And if we lock all of the weights that we want to maintain, so we want to maintain spine four, all the way down to the upper arm twist, we don't want the neck and we don't want the head. If we lock those, and what we can do is if we pick the highest joint we want to replace all of the other ones with, and we can just do a replace flood, and that'll remove the weights from all of the unlocked ones. So if we run a remove unused influences again, and now you'll see we've only got the important ones that we wanted. Which is brilliant. So if we swing spine four again, you'll notice we get that much nicer, much nicer effect. And we also maintain the, the clavicles wrapping to it, which is brilliant. So, so moving on from here, we need to talk material assignments. Um, so the way Unreal deals with cloth is that cloth is applied on a per material basis. So if I just open up Unreal Editor quickly and open up the mannequin, you'll see he's got two material slots already. Um, if you want to apply a cloth to a part of him, the one thing you've got to consider is that cloth will be applied to everything on that material slot. So if I just isolate that one for a moment, let's just say in this example, we were wanting to apply cloth to just this arm. Because of the way the material slots work and cloth works, you're actually going to apply cloth to the entirety of what's visible there, which is obviously really bad for performance and unnecessary if you're just influencing one arm. So to get around this, what you can either do is you can make a duplicate material slot and only assign it to an arm that you want to apply the cloth to. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to assign an entirely new material slot to the cape. So we can do this by just open up the material editor and I already have a, a nice material cape here which I can just assign to it. So when I import this now, I'm gonna have three materials rather than two. So now we're done here, let's save that out. Export out. It's gonna to export to our mannequin. Yes, we wanna replace. In the FBX exporter, make sure you've got animation ticked. Skins as well. That's probably about it, that's all you need. And now if we head over to the Unreal side and let's do a re-import with new file and we're going to pick the one we've just made. So we'll let that come in. It's detected the new material slot, so we want to reset to FBX. And there we go. We've got our cape inside of Unreal. So let's give him a nice little material. Material. 
To begin making your cloth inside of Unreal, all you have to do is click on the actual element that you want to turn into cloth, right click on it, and you'll get this option to create clothing data from section. And it'll do a little drop down where you, this is actually making the clothing data. So let's give it a name. Let's just call it cloth cape. We don't want to remove it from the mesh. Um, this is a optimization, which I'll explain in a different video. But yeah, we'll skip it for now because we're just going to use the render mesh as the simulation mesh. The physics asset is the asset that is going to be used for collisions with the cape. This doesn't have to be the same physics asset used on your uh, character. So you could make a physics asset that's bespoke to collisions for your cloth if you wanted to. Uh, so let's go ahead and click create. You'll notice nothing happens. This is because all we've done there is create clothing data. We haven't actually assigned it to the mesh yet. So to do this, we can click on the mesh again and click apply and apply cloth. Alternatively, if you go over to the LOD sections and you scroll down to the element you want, there's actually a drop down here where you can assign clothing here. Okay, now once that's applied, we want to actually start editing the cloth. If you navigate to the clothing window, which it should be available up here, alternatively, if it's not, you can go to window and clothing. Sometimes when you create cloth data, it doesn't actually update in the clothing window, so you have to close it and reopen it. Um, it's quite annoying, but you'll get used to it. And to start modifying the cloth, all you have to do is click on it. And you'll get a range of uh, properties down here, which are all about the simulation and the, the mass properties. And uh, these are gonna be an entirely video of its own, but today I'm just gonna focus on uh, how to paint and how to actually just get cloth running. So if we just close these down, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna paint the cloth. Up here at the top, there's a button called activate cloth paint. If you just click that, you'll get this new view, uh, which allows you to paint into the viewport. So if we scroll down here, we get a few properties under cloth painting. Your most important ones are at the bottom for brush. So you can increase the size of your brush. Sometimes it goes too big, um, but you can go 10 and you get small size. You can change the strength and fall off. But the most important value is what you're painting here, which is the paint value. So if I just zoom in on the character here, and I start painting. You'll notice we've got two colors here. So we've got pink and white. So what white is actually representing is 100. So if you remember earlier in the video, I said you're not painting what is and isn't cloth. As you can see here, we've got we've got pink and white. That that doesn't mean pink is not cloth and white is cloth because it's all cloth in this state. You're basically painting the amount that this cloth can move from its skin distance. So at 100, it's 100 centimeters. Uh, so if I deactivate this cloth paint, so as you can see, it's sort of wobbling in there, but it's been held together by its outside. Although it was all painted 100, it sort of acts like an, a lattice where the vertices on the outside kind of hold it all together. There's the perimeter of zero cloth. So you kind of get this effect where it can bulge in, but still be held up from the outside. So what we can do is we can just start painting on the whole character. There's other brush tools down here. So there's like a smoothing tool, which is really cool. Uh, you can do a flood equivalent called smooth mesh and it'll just start smoothing up the whole, the whole limb. Really cool. Alternatively, um, if I just reset this all back to zero, another brush you can use, it's called the gradient tool. So what you can do is if you drag a line of vertices like that in green and then you go, go somewhere else. If you do control drag and do another line of vertices, so then you've got green and red and hit enter, you basically get a gradient all the way down um, so you don't have to manually paint it, which is really useful. Uh, sometimes it does do this where it, it, it puts a minor amount of paint on the top, but it's very easy just to go back up and brush that out. Um, so that's super useful. So if we click deactivate paint, we should have a nice little Superman cape. And there we go. So we're getting some nice collisions already because the, the physics asset for this mannequin is pretty accurate to its skeleton um, and render mesh. So if you wanted to, you could go through and if you see any more clipping, you could add additional bits in, but it's good enough for now. Um, I'll do a separate video explaining some kind of do's and don'ts and uh, some extra features that are exclusive for cloth. Um, but yeah, so if we just save this and we go back into our game, and there you go, we've got our cape. So you'll notice it's kind of getting tangled up and there's some weird effects where it kind of gets caught 
And basically what, what's happening is the simulation is stopping at that 100 units. So a lot of people also don't realize that in these painting tools, um, although the paint value only drags up to 100, that isn't actually the max it can go to. You can, you can paint as high as you want. You can put 200 in here, you put 500. The higher you put this, the, more, the higher there's the potential for problems with things like, so you like, like this where you get problems where it's wrapped around the character. But some people might like this. It, it might just be preferring on your style. Um, but yeah, that's how you do a very basic setup of a cloth inside of um, Unreal. I'll do a separate video on the cloth properties, how to do LODs, and how to do simplified simulation meshes. Uh, but yeah, guys, hope you learned something. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, MattLakeTA, uh, or comment below. I read all the comments. Uh, see you in the next one, guys. Bye.